Learning theory proposes that attachments can be learned through classical conditioning. The infant learns to associate their mother with the pleasure from food. In 1950, Dollard and Miller proposed that attachments can be learned through operant conditioning. Food is rewarding for the infant because it relieves the discomfort of hunger. The infant seeks out their mother because she provides the food. The food is the primary reinforcer and the mother is the secondary reinforcer. It isn't just the infant who's conditioned but also the mother. Her response to her infant's crying stops an unpleasant stimulus. She'll continue to respond to and feed the infant because this behaviour is negatively reinforcing. In order to evaluate learning theory and assess whether it provides a good explanation of where attachments come from, we need to identify some strengths and weaknesses. One strength is that it has been widely established that we can learn various behaviours through conditioning, so it's possible that attachments might also be learned in this way. Evidence has demonstrated that first attachments are usually formed between an infant and their mother, and as the mother is most likely to be feeding the infant and providing physical care, this provides some support for the theory. Schaefer and Emerson found that 65% of the infants in their longitudinal study formed their first attachment with their mother. The weaknesses of learning theory as an explanation of attachment, however, seem to outweigh the strengths. The assumption that food is a central feature of attachment development seems to be the biggest problem for the theory. Attachments might be learned, but this does not necessarily mean that food is the pleasure-providing stimulus. Attention from the caregiver or physical comfort from cuddling might also be reinforcing. Although most first attachments form with the mother, research suggests this is not necessarily about the food she provides. Schaefer and Emerson, for example, found that attachments were formed with the caregiver who was the most sensitive and responsive to the child, and this wasn't always the person that fed, bathed, and did the most physical care for the child. Other evidence also backs up the criticism that attachments are not based on food. Fox found that the infants raised in a kibbutz who were studied were cared for by a nurse rather than their parents, but they still formed primary attachments with their parents despite spending little time with them, and not the nurse as learning theory would predict. Harlow and Harlow suggested that food is not the basis for attachments in their study with infant monkeys. The monkeys, who'd been removed from their mothers and isolated, spent more time with a cloth-covered wire monkey than a wire monkey that dispensed food, and they clung to the soft monkey in times of distress. This suggests attachments may be more about comfort and feeling safe than the pleasure that is given by food. The final weakness to consider here is that behaviourism is reductionist. This means it explains our behaviour in its simplest terms. Arguing that attachments are learned behaviours and the result of our experience and pleasure fails to take into account the role that nature might play in attachment development. Attachment behaviours don't seem to be just pleasurable, but they also seem to be vital for our safety and perhaps even our survival.